Hello, and welcome to my channel. My name is Jonathan Cohn, and today I have my review of a nonfiction book titled What's Next? A Backstage Pass to the West Wing, its cast and crew, and its enduring legacy of service. This is the book by Melissa Fitzgerald and Mary McCormick, two actresses who were on the West Wing TV show. And so it's like a it's like a book about the West Wing behind the scenes from people who were actually there. And all of the cast and crew that are still alive uh, participated just about. You name it, they were they participated in this book. Even people who were kind of disgruntled about it. Like generally, they got everybody involved in the production of this book uh, for their interviews and, and resources, which was very impressive. And uh, so I should preface this by saying I don't talk about nonfiction much on the channel. I uh, generally discuss fiction on here. Every once in a while, a fiction book or a nonfiction book I will read that uh, I think is suitable for the channel. I do read a lot of nonfiction that has to do with politics and my worldview, like my religion, and I just don't talk about that stuff on the channel as much. But sometimes when I talk about, when I read a nonfiction book that I think would fit on the channel, I, I have fun with it and, and discuss it here. I did review, I think back in December, the book The Mysterious Case of Rudolph Diesel by Douglas Brunt, which was about the the, the, the engineer and the designer designer uh, Rudolf Diesel who made like the diesel engine and stuff great great book great guy um, really interesting stuff and I also read uh, what's next and decided to review this and my second part of my preface is that the West Wing TV show and I'm not exaggerating when I say this is my favorite TV show of all time bar none I have I started watching the West Wing TV show when I was uh, a teenager. I think I was like maybe 11 or 12. Uh, my dad, I walked in the room and my dad was watching the, f the, first, the first two episodes of season seven. And I watched through season seven with him for the first time when I was like 11 or 12. And I, I, I loved it. I thought it was amazing. And I've always had the political bug and been interesting in pol pinched in politics and stuff. Obviously, I disagree with a lot of the world views in the West Wing, but I got really interested in it. And then as a teenager, I started watching the show over and over and over and over. It's part of the reason why I became a, um, uh, a government major um, and a politics major at my college when I went to college. I, my, my undergrad was in politics because of the West Wing, I believe, because I just was so interested in it. And so I've, I no joke, watched the show probably 30 or 35 times all the way through. And I'm not exaggerating. In fact, I might be underselling it. I watched it that much as a kid. Um, I haven't watched it in a couple of years because I've been focusing on other stuff and because I practically memorized the show. But I have no, I'm no, no joke when I say I've seen the show 30 to 35 times all the way through. And so I, uh, and I was an avid re a listener of the West Wing Weekly podcast when it was on. I started listening right as they started the podcast in early 2016, and I listened all the way through the podcast's end, and I've re-listened to it a lot. So I really care about this show. It's really an important part of my my life. And so I was, of course, you know, I had to, had to get the book when it came out. And I think there's been unofficial uh, books or books that were like less officially produced, not not quite had the quite the quality. Uh, maybe there were essays about the West Wing, but not there's haven't really been like professional grade books about it. And this one is especially professional grade because like it has a foreword from Aaron Sorkin. It has an introduction by Allison Janney. It has all of the cast, the main cast, uh, all blurbed it. Like they were all involved. And so I was like, I have to read this. And this is basically two books in one. And that is the first major frustration of the book is that it is two books in one. Half of the book is dedicated to the production of the West Wing, talking about how they started it, how they cast it, how they got the crew together, all the, the frustrations of the production, and talking about how the sets were built and figuring out how they were going to put them together. And there was it was great. Then you had the second half of the book. Uh, not the second. It's not like the second half, as in like the like the, in the last two hundred fifty pages. No, I mean second half, like the other portion, because it goes back and forth with this. But the idea of legacy and service. A lot of the book is dedicated to what did the actors and the cast and crew do after the show ended. What did they do with regards to service? It talks about all of the different service organizations that they've contributed to, and it also talks about like you know how Hamilton was influenced by the West Wing. The 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 
the musical, or how podcasts have started because of it, or how books and, and politicians have, have, have started their political careers because of the, uh, the West Wing. And all of that is very interesting and very laudable, but I think it should have been a separate book. And uh, uh, Melissa Fitzgerald and Mary McCormick obviously care about service and about legacy. That is an important thing to the two of them. If there was any other two people writing about the book, I think it would have focused much more on the production. But because it's uh, Melissa and Mary, they actively care about service, which is laudable. I wish the book had been split in two, that they had published a book about just about service and they had interspersed all the West Wing cast and crew and stuff in that book and dedicated this 550 pages to being exclusively about the production. Because this book is heavily focused on the first two seasons production, talking about the behind the scenes, talking about all the logistics, talking about all that stuff. And then it very lightly touches on seasons three through seven. It's very light touch on seasons three through seven. The the transition to the um, to the John Wells taking over the show in season five, it's not covered enough, in my opinion. And the season six, the decision to uh, write in Matt Santos and Arnold Vinick, very barely touched upon. Season seven, they has two, a couple of episodes are mentioned in season seven, but it was more about like the wrap up of the series and not talking about the production that went into it, which is very fascinating to me. And so uh, I was very frustrated that the book did not focus more on the production of seasons three through seven. That's one thing. The second thing is the book is very much conversationally written. When you read the typical nonfiction book about let's like more of like a historical document like this is, it tends to read more academically. And I'm usually of the opinion that you need to democratize the, the writing style to try to make it easier for people to understand, to try to get more people into reading. But here it felt like it went too conversationally. And here's an example. In several paragraphs of the book, you'd be reading about this information, which was really fascinating, and then in the middle of a sentence, not at the end of a sentence in between sentences, no, in the middle of a sentence, there would be an insert with a parenthesis where the authors would be uh, inserting uh, a thought that would be a couple words long or something. Uh, like someone like, that's crazy, or, uh, 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 oh, and it ties into this too, and it would just... It would, it would stop the writing style instantly. And sometimes it was funny or sometimes it was interesting, but it didn't feel like it was professional. It felt very much like if you were having a conversation and someone's telling you this story and then they said, oh, wait a second, and I forgot to add this in. Like it felt like that. And uh, it, just, it just felt odd in a professional book. Um, maybe had those inserts been footnotes, like if you had had, like you had read the sentence and then in the foot and it had a footnote to the bottom and at the bottom of the book page, it had had that thought from the, uh, actor from the, from the writer, maybe that would have worked better and he would still been able to have those inserts, but just the way it was done, it just felt very jarring. Uh, and so their writing style, you know, if they had brought in like a third writer, someone who is more a professional at this, maybe it would, that would have been fixed. Or maybe if their editor had had more heavy hand, I don't know. Um, uh, the other thing about this is it is very much rose colored glasses because these are the actors involved and I don't blame the actors for being so nice about the show. And as I mentioned, it is my favorite show of all time. I love it. I've watched it so many times. The episode Noel is one of my favorite episodes of television ever. And, uh, so, so I understand why they had these kind of po such positive views, but I think there were mistakes made along the way, and I think that they could have highlighted that more. Again, if the show had, if the book had been more about the production of the show, in less of the um, uh, uh, the the service and legacy of the show, I think that they could have focused more. And uh, instead, they said, "All right, we've got a limited time in the pages because we're going to talk about legacy and service. So what we do talk about the production is going to be the positives of the production." Which I get. And again, I think this is more a fault of the publisher uh, not choosing to edit them down as opposed to uh, the, the, the writers themselves. And this is published by Dutton, by the way. Uh, 
this book also, um, uh, it does have some things I did really like about the book. It does provide some interesting thoughts in the casting, how some of the actors got involved. It also has a lot of stories about the actors who couldn't contribute. Like, for instance, John Spencer. There's a lot of stories about John Spencer uh, in here, which were really sweet because he can't give interviews anymore because he's not dead. So they give some really sweet interviews about him. And then there's also some uh, just some, some great behind-the-scenes stuff that I didn't know. A lot of the stuff I did know because, again, I listened to the whole West Wing Weekly where a lot of this information is covered. It's a much more in-depth... If you want an episode-by-episode in-depth coverage uh, behind the scenes, go to the West Wing Weekly podcast, um, which is mentioned in here a lot. But uh, there was some new stuff in here, too, that I I found very fascinating. Um, uh, And there were, you know, it would highlight quotes from the show that would have to do with the topic at hand, and I thought that was a really nice touch. That was a great move, whether it was the actors, the all writers, or the editors, that was a great move to include those quotes. I really liked that. Um, Also, uh, like, there there are some points in here where they're just talking about the episode, and I just started to tear up. For instance, Noel, as I mentioned, is one of my favorite episodes of television ever. And when I read the story of the man who fell in the hole, I just, I, I was sitting in Barnes & Noble reading it, and I almost broke down. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and read you real quick from that, that story, because it makes me all, cry pretty much every time I read it. Um, uh, let's see where it is. All right, I'm going to read to you uh, the story that's it's if you've seen the West Wing TV show, you've heard this before, but if you haven't, just this story is just really sweet. This guy's walking down the street when he falls in a hole. The walls are so steep he can't get out. A doctor passes by and the guy shouts up, Hey, you, can you help me out? The doctor writes a prescription, throws it down in the hole, and moves on. Then a priest comes along and the guy shouts up, Father, I'm down in this hole. Can you help me out? The priest writes out a prayer, throws it down in the hole, and moves on. Then a friend walks by. Hey, Joe, it's me. Can you help me out? And the friend jumps in the hole. Our guy says, are you stupid? Now we're both stuck in here. The friend says, yeah, but I've been here before, and I know the way out. As long as I got a job, you got a job, understand? (sighs) Reading that again just... And there are moments like that throughout the book where we just we go back and revisit the dialogue and it talks about how the dialogue was formed and it talks about why it was used in the scene and why it's so impactful from a critical standpoint. And I just that story, it's basically it basically sounds like a proverb uh, from the Bible or or, uh, or one of the um, uh, stories like the uh, uh, the the Good Samaritan, that type thing. And it just, it just moves me every time I think about it. So there were moments like that where like, and reading about tomorrow, the episode, the finale of the West Wing, that got me. Like that was a long chapter. It got me. I was like, oh, this is so good. I'm so, and then they say why they chose a specific scene to be the last episode, the last scene shot. And I was like, oh, I feel that. So there's some great stuff in here. But I do wish that it had been split up and the service legacy stuff had been its own book and that this had been 550 pages of the production. Because you could have cut out 200, 250 of the other stuff and added in the stuff about seasons three through seven. So, um, which are again are covered, but very lightly. Whereas seasons one and two, you understand the production of seasons one and two pretty much. Um, anyway, that is my basic review of the book. It's, it's an entertaining book. As a hardcore wing nut, I'm glad I read the book and I'm glad I bought the book. But, uh, and, and, and as someone who's also interested in production of television and how it works and how the business works, this is also very fascinating to me. I'm an investor in a lot of studios and so because of this, it's important to me to understand it. But uh, if you're like, if you're wanting an in-depth of the West Wing itself uh, and not the legacy stuff, I would go to the West Wing Weekly podcast. I think that's an excellent podcast to go to. So that is my review of what's next. I'll give it a 7 out of 10. I enjoyed it, but it's not the best book of the month for me. But uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. And until next time, I'm Jonathan, and thank you for watching.